Thank you for joining this fourth community update regarding COVID-19 with a focus on the Santa Barbara County area. I'm Lynn Fitzgibbons, an infectious disease physician. In prior updates, we've started by looking at the state of the epidemic around the country and then around our state before focusing on our own community of Santa Barbara County. We've done this in large part to help understand the context of the bigger situation, but also because doing this has helped us understand what may be ahead or to predict what may be coming to our own community. Unfortunately, this time our community's condition has deteriorated so significantly in the past two weeks that we're going to skip that introduction and instead focus exclusively on Santa Barbara County today. For those seeking more information about the national or state situation, I would encourage you to continue to follow reliable sources of data including the COVID tracking project and the California Department of Public Health's dashboard. So as promised, let's jump straight into our own community's data. We can begin by looking at the number of new patients diagnosed and reported to the Public Health Department daily from the beginning of October through yesterday, as has been updated consistently with our local Public Health Department's dashboard and of course, the Santa Barbara County Community Dashboard. When we started doing these updates in mid-November, the number of new cases diagnosed every day was starting to creep up. Now we can see, particularly if you look in these past two weeks, that the number of new cases diagnosed and reported every day has sadly continued to rise and remains very high. As we look at this and several other charts, it's important to remember that the holidays, particularly Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's are each very unique. We'll talk about the impact of the holidays on where we project this daily case rate could go, but I also want to point out that the holidays bring a lot of variability to these numbers. For example, in the few days before Thanksgiving and Christmas, we saw a huge increase in the number of total tests performed, and presumably a resultant um, increase in the new cases diagnosed that week. During the holiday weekends themselves though, when many clinics and other reporting agencies were perhaps closed, there was a general decrease in new cases, new tests reported, and also even new reported deaths. Finally, in the days after the holidays, when fewer tests may be done in people who feel well, and perhaps a higher proportion of tests are done in those who actually have symptoms, we have solidly seen an increase in the percentage um, that are positive or the percentage of the tests that are done, for example, this week um, that unfortunately are turning out positive. I point out these differences really just to remind us that the holidays themselves um, are very concerning with regards to gatherings, bringing people together, and the likelihood for continuing to see surges on top of surges. But day over day, there is just a lot of uh, variability and a lot of factors that impact any particular day's data. And so my approach has been to look at the week over week trends over these somewhat unusual holiday periods, because I found them to be more helpful and more instructive than looking at any one day's specific information. Unfortunately, on this slide, we clearly see the week over week trend, new cases continuing to climb. And so having clearly seen that our cases are going up in the county, the next obvious question many of us ask is, where are they going up? Are they going up in my city or my neighborhood? At this point, unfortunately, if you live in Santa Barbara County, and that is anywhere in Santa Barbara County, the answer is the cases are rising. I really appreciate this graphic available, available from the LA Times. As simple as it appears, it is so very rich in information. To help understand it, let's first look at the small box in the top right entitled New Cases and with shades ranging from white or very light blue to dark blue. If a location has few cases, this will be represented in white and if it has many, then it will be very dark. We'll return to this. Let's look now at any one of the cities or other locations across Santa Barbara County and follow each row along to see first how many total cases have been reported there, then how many total cases per 100,000 residents. This is also known as the case rate. And remember, this is a better way to compare cases between areas which may have more or less residents, as we've discussed before. These two numbers tell us more specifically um, about the totals 
But then the following two numbers are looking really at the last two weeks, including again, the total count in each of these locations and the case rates. And finally, my favorite, the far right, we see this very clever shaded graphic for each location. This graphic, the shaded graphic, represents the entire pandemic with March on the left of each of these uh, small pictures to the current week on the far right. Remember from the top, if there are few cases in a week, that week will be represented in white or very light blue. And if there were many, it will be very dark. To help us understand this, let's look all the way at the bottom at the federal prison uh, for a point of comparison. And here we see the very dark region during the outbreak in that location in April and May but very few cases otherwise, and the rest of the graphic is therefore white. Santa Maria on the top row, of course, was impacted very heavily with the surge over the summer, as we see with the darkening around the middle of that graphic, but unfortunately, we now clearly see dark appearing again in the Santa Maria and North County area in these past two weeks. And finally, as you look down every other location in Santa Barbara County, the story is very, very clear. The epidemic is clearly surging now everywhere in our county and reaching an intensity that we have not yet seen throughout really all of our communities. So let's talk about hospitalizations and ICU capacity. When we look at the number of patients hospitalized in Santa Barbara County, we break it down by the total number hospitalized and the number who are in an ICU bed with confirmed COVID. We've seen this curve before, and unfortunately, the recent trend has continued to worsen. We see here the epidemic beginning back in March and carrying on through this week. With the light peach color, the total hospitalized, including those who need both ICU care, but of course, uh, everyone else, including the, the other three quarters of the COVID-19 patients who need med surge level care. And in the darker and the red, we see the number of patients who are critically ill with COVID-19 across Santa Barbara County. For comparison, the huge surge we felt in the summer, unfortunately, now looks small. Looking at a specific hospital system at Cottage Health, we can see the week over week new admissions to the hospital with confirmed COVID-19. And again, this story is very similar. We had a big surge over the summer with a record in the middle of the summer of approximately 26 patients admitted to the hospital in one week. Last week, unfortunately, we had 50 new admissions to Cottage with COVID-19. And this is, of course, being felt across our county. This week alone, in three days, we've had 28 new admissions, again, indicating that next week is going to be yet worse. And so how does this translate to ICU capacity across the region, but also um, closer to home? As we've seen with so many of our metrics, so many of our measures related to COVID-19, Santa Barbara County is often quite fortunate in um, not, uh, not, not falling um, and not worsening at the same um, time as the rest of our region. But unfortunately, as we've seen with many examples, including case rates and now hospitalizations and ICU capacity, we are clearly affected. We simply trail the rest of the region. Here in the red, we see our region's ICU capacity, of course, falling to zero in these last couple of weeks. Santa Barbara County's ICU capacity had been fairly well preserved until really this last one to two weeks. And we now very sadly are down to approximately 6% ICU capacity across the Santa Barbara County area. So let me finish with some final thoughts for the week. Our region of Southern California is clearly in crisis. We're hearing stories of hospitals impacted hospitals without enough staff, hospitals without enough beds, hospitals um, that are unable to accept more ambulances. Our own community of Santa Barbara County continues to trail the region by many of these metrics um, approximately two to four weeks later. 
And this is, I think, currently most evident when we look at the ICU capacity. We've not been spared. We are simply seeing it in a delayed, in a delayed way. Our own hospitals are facing significant strains in staffing and the need for isolation beds, unlike any that they have faced so far in the epidemic. And all of this now in the context of these busy winter months in the hospital. Strains in ICU capacity are only part of the story. Remember that approximately three quarters of all patients who need to be in a hospital with COVID-19 are not in the ICU. They're feeling staffing and bed constraints, um, certainly in the ICU, but of course also elsewhere in the hospital. And the limitations and the constraints for these patients is also at an all-time high. Unfortunately, too, we are seeing extensive outbreaks at skilled nursing and other congregate living facilities throughout Santa Barbara County, with over 50 active outbreaks being tracked this week by our county colleagues. The holidays are unique times, and our hospital systems locally are in this very, very tenuous situation, already feeling surges upon surges. And with gatherings last week and the potential for more gatherings this week, potentially jeopardizing the situation further. I would say clearly at this point, unfortunately, this is no longer an external threat, but at least for these coming weeks, this is a very real danger now, already affecting many of our friends, neighbors, and loved ones. And so let me finish by please, again, asking everyone, continue to stay safe. Please keep wearing your masks. Please do, if you have the option to avoid gatherings this week, um, please do not get together with people outside of your household. And please know that 2021 may begin a little bumpy, but with everyone's good efforts, it could still smooth out very quickly. With that, I'd like to thank you and sincerely wish every one of you a very happy, safe, and healthy new year. <laughs>